So these were the two things, but they were further limited by a few things like uh, when there are flat areas, when there are transparent things and samples are quite thicker to allow the cells to pass through. In some, in those cases, it was not possible to, to create the dark field. If some of you are wondering that how to create dark field, I mean, how to, how to bring this state, can you answer me that what should be done in the microscope to bring that to dark state condition or dark field condition? Those who are using microscopy, they can answer me that what you do when you perform dark field microscopy, what must be fitted in your microscope to perform dark field microscopy? There is something which is known as dark field stop. It's a small plastic fitting which is present. No, negative staining is not right answer. You don't have to stain in that case. I already told you that staining, when staining cannot be performed or when you don't want to perform staining, in that case, you use dark field. So dark field will be used when samples are transparent. Now I was telling you what has to be done in microscope. You have to use a small plastic attachment to turn a microscope into dark field. And that attachment is known as dark field stop. And what it does, it stop all the light that is coming from the background and allows only the light that is passing through the sample to reach your eyes. All right, do you know this person? He made an important breakthrough in microscopy. We were talking about oldest types of microscopies by now, bright field and dark field. And you would have used those things in your elementary school level. But when you went to the college, when you went to masters or when you started your research, you would have started using another type of microscope, which is known as phase contrast microscope. So he's the one who is credited with the fatherhood of uh, phase contrast microscope, Fred Zernike, and he got Nobel Prize in physics in the 1953 in the same year when DNA structure was developed. So this was the microscope that was invented by Fred Zernike and uh, he invented a new method to enhance the contrast by changing phase of light. That was an interesting idea. Let's look into that, how changing the phase of light can help in creating the contrast. So for understanding that, we should go back to a fact that light is electromagnetic radiation and it travels as a pulsating wave uh, in the form of electric and magnetic field which are perpendicular to each other. So suppose this is one wave and we are able to see this wave from the front in terms of intensity. And you can see another wave. Uh, I have superposed that wave with yellow color in this diagram that is in the same phase. When I say two waves are in same phase, then you would say that these waves are having crest and troughs at the same time. The highest point is called as crest, lowest point is called as trough. So crest and trough are emerging at the same time and the waves are called to be in the same phase. So when there is no shift in the phase, I mean, one light is coming from background and one light is coming from sample and there is no shift, then there is a phenomenon which is known as constructive interference. This you may be knowing. When two waves have same phase, they will superpose each other and they will give rise to a newer wave with larger amplitude. And that's known as positive interference or constructive interference that gives rise to a more brighter light. So what actually happens, suppose we have a sample or let's say a cell and some light is coming or falling on it. So light that passes from inside of the sample has different intensity light that comes from background has different intensity. But light that passes from the border that will have both type of waves, some from background and some from the sample. So they will create a confusion because they will become more brighter areas due to constructive interference. So if somehow, if we can minimize the edges of sample, if we can create a destructive interference at the edges of the sample, it would be possible for us to make the image more clear. And that was the idea of Zernike to use a system to make an object much better. So usually what happens, the light that passes through the sample and the light that passes 
from the background they have a phase difference of lambda by 4 lambda is the wavelength as you can see here uh, on the screen the distance from one crest to another crest is known as lambda and whenever the wave passes through the sample this is the wave passing from the sample this is retarded by lambda by 4 so there is a phase difference and this results in some interference but this is not good enough to make the cells visible you can see here the pictures when you have completely a wave two waves in same phase then you will not see anything background will look as bright as sample you don't see anything here in this sample but you see few things here because the light passing through the background and the light passing through the sample has got some difference in the phase. If you can increase this phase difference little more and if you can cause completely destructive diffraction, def destructive interference, then it would be possible to see it more clearly. So what can be done is, again, we have two waves, one passing through the sample, another passing through background. So the light that was passing through sample retarded by lambda by four, but by using some engineering methods or by using some strategy in your objective lens, if you can accelerate or you can fasten up the wave that is passing through the background empty space by lambda by four. So total gap or total difference in the phases will now become lambda by two. So two waves, one which is passing through background and another one which is passing through sample will now be differing from each other in lambda by two. And in that case, you will experience the complete destructive, dif uh, dis destructive interference. And when there will be complete destructive interference in that situation, you will observe a complete dark area around the cells. So that will help you to see the cells with much better contrast. So I think you can see those pictures in right hand side that what happened when there is no shift in phase, what happened when there is slight shift in the phase, and what happened when there is a complete lambda by two shift in the phase, you had much better pictures. So this was something that was the idea of Zernaik, which fetched him a Nobel Prize for inventing such a wonderful technique in the microscopy, which we know today as phase contrast microscopy. And this is the simple optics you can see. The light comes from bottom, you have some light uh, coming, coming from uh, the source, and then you have a specimen. There are two types of lights, one passing through the background. The red one is the one which is passing through background from the empty space, and yellow light is passing through the sample. So what you are basically doing, you are making this red light to pass through a small portion in the objective lens, which is known as phase disk. So it's a kind of group which is present in objective lens. If you would be able to see the lens carefully of a phase contrast microscope, <clears throat> you would notice a small group or ring-like thing. That ring-like thing helps in retarding uh, the phase, so, sorry, escalating the phase of light by lambda by four. And escalating the phase of lambda by four of background light and retardation of the phase of sample light by lambda by four together makes this phase difference of lambda by two shift. And this lambda by two shift results in prominent difference in the intensities resulting in very good contrast in the image. Yes, so, so somebody has asked how it is done. So answer to you is by using this phase plate. So when you use phase plate, it is possible with the help of phase plates because it has a groove to change the, the phase of background light or to escalate the phase of background light by lambda by four and you get contrast by developing that. So that's called phase contrast microscopy. You can see that picture here. Uh, this is how a phase disk 